Hello, everyone. Uh, I wanted to share my story in some details. I was kind of hesitating to, you know, make a video, but you know what? You know, I thought maybe I should do that because few people thought maybe you know this. Maybe I'm not a real person. Some people thought there was some Jewish conspiracy going on, and you know, all sorts of ideas out there. So I wanted to make a make a video to show that I I'm a real person. You know, I was born <clears throat> I was born into an Ismaili family. My dad is Ismaili. My mom was Sunni. And I was raised in Ismaili. And um, around the age of maybe 18 or so in high school, I, I found Islam. Some of my friends invited me to read the Quran and I started reading it. Um, I started praying, you know, what was called namaz or salah. And, um, and I got really excited. I found the Quran and I got really excited about it. I really liked it. And I said, hey, this is God's message to me. I didn't look into it too critically. I felt like, you know, I looked into a little bit of other religions and stuff and I felt it's just instinctive and I felt like this is something, you know, good, something I want to follow, uh, God's message. And I started praying five times a day. And, you know, eventually I took a deep dive into Islam. I, I started following it with all my heart and mind. You know, within like um, a few years after that, I started university and then I got married. And then, you know, um, what else? And then I started working. So when I was working, I tried my best to implement Islam. You know, I would pray even at the office. I would find a stairwell. I would go and pray wherever I could, you know, and oh, I would get, if, if you had a prayer room, you know, I would invite other people to come pray with me. And even at university, you know, in the middle of exams, I would stop to pray. I would ask them, can I please get up? I need to say my prayers for Maghrib especially. And yeah, I was following it to the best of my ability, to be honest. I sincerely believed in Islam. Um, I used to give out some DVDs. I, I made some DVDs of my own with some Islamic videos. I used to go from uh, mosque to mosque, uh, videotaping lectures and at conferences and and I wanted to promote it because I felt truly in my heart this was a, the true religion. I wanted people to go to Jannah. I wanted Allah to be pleased with me. And, you know, I wanted to follow the Prophet. And so that's what I did. I created a website, lightuponlight.com. And, you know, eventually another one, worstbywordsquran.com, to, to promote Islam because I believed in it. And um, there's still a bunch of videos on there, if you go and see, of um, that I, I videotaped myself, some of the lectures. And some of the other ones I got permission from others to put online. So that's that's what I was doing, and um, I when I started working, you know, I would avoid jobs that that were involved with riba, you know, anything to do with the bank. Uh, I wouldn't work for any banks whatsoever. I wouldn't work in the media industry like television or music. Personally, I would avoid listening to. I wouldn't listen to music. I wouldn't let my kids listen to music. I even put my kids in Islamic school, um, you know, for as much as I could afford it, even though it was expensive here in Canada. But I mean, that's what you do, right? You're, if you're a Muslim and you truly believe in it in all your heart. As well, you know, I used to rent. I didn't have a mortgage because I believed in it. Now, you know, there came a point in my life where I started having a little bit of doubt here and there, small doubts. And eventually, you know, I was at one year, two years ago, um, I had some doubts. I was discussing with a friend online and he mentioned that a lot of the stories in the Quran actually come from Jewish folktales. And I was very surprised about that. Like... Jewish folktales. I said, no, no, no. You mean it came from the Bible or the Hebrew Torah. And when I looked into it, I found out that actually a lot of the stories are from the Talmud, which is actually the Jewish commentary and the Jewish stories and the, basically the rabbis, you know, commentary of the of the traditions. And so it doesn't really much have a d divine origin. And, you know, I also had a big problem with the story of Dulkanin, you know, these this tribe of how Dulkanin, he trapped this tribe of uh, people, Yajuj and Majuj, Gog and Magog, behind a giant uh, gate built of copper and um, copper and iron. And and I was wondering, where is this place? How come we can't find it? You know, we we have Google Earth and all that, and how come we can't find it? So that was another doubt. And I actually, I believe, left Islam for one day. But then I decided, you know what? I'm going to put my doubts aside. You know, I, I'm Muslim. I want to go to Jannah. I want to believe in Allah. And, and I became Muslim for one more year. And then last year, so one year ago, is when it truly, actually, when I truly left Islam for good. Um, I was in a, I was in Ram Ramadan, and it was I was at a pre-iftar halaqa, um, and the sheikh was saying, you know, Allah holds up the sky without any pillars, and this brought back all my doubts about, you know, if the Quran is truly from from God, the Creator of the universe, the, you know, the no, the one that knows all things, why is he describing the world in a way that, you know, was the seventh century understanding of the world like the sky doesn't have okay we know the sky doesn't have any pillars that you can see um but there's no need for pillars like we're, we're just a ball in space sky is just it's just emptiness it's just emptiness of space so there's no 
there's no need for any pillars visible or invisible and you know there's many things like that like the the orbit of the sun and the moon why Allah describes an orbit of the sun and the moon like we know the orbit of the moon is around the earth that makes sense but the orbit of the sun like what orbit would that be you know I looked into this and I found well there is an orbit it's a 300 million year orbit of the sun around the Milky Way galaxy which has nothing to do with humanity whatsoever because it's completely useless but of course, at that time, you know, the Muslims would have thought that this this orbit is um is the orbit of the sun around the earth. And even in Sahih Hadith, Prophet Muhammad he asked his companions, "Do you know where the sun goes when at at the time of Maghrib?" And they said, "You know, Allah knows best, and His Messenger knows best." And he said, "It goes beneath the throne of Allah." Now we know the sun is actually still there, and it's actually the earth that's going around the sun. So you know, this one and many other things, they didn't add up to me that why some, the creator of the universe is making these mistakes. Or, you know, describing it in a way that doesn't make any sense today, now based on a new information. And it made me wonder, is it truly Allah the creator? Or is it just coming from a man that lived in the 7th century that believed these things and was, was basically writing them as he went? And so, you know, the, the stories in the Quran, like like I said, Dul Khanin, you know, where is Gog and Magog, Yajuj and Majuj? There's, there's supposed to be, you know, millions and millions of them stuck behind this dam. We haven't found any giant gate anywhere in the world. I mean, even some of the, I think it was Omar, we went to look for it and they, they didn't find it. I mean, it doesn't make any sense, right? And so these things, my doubts began to grow and grow. And eventually I got to the point where I said, this can't be from God. I don't believe in this anymore. And because my doubt became more than my certainty. And when I started to look into each one of the claims that of, of you know, in the Quran, that the Quran is actually from God, like embryology and the mountains and all of these things, including the language, I found they just fell down flat. Like, for example, you know, embryology, you know, all you have to do is look into these things in detail to see how people misrepresent the Quran to be a scientific thing. When actually it's not, you know, these these stories were meant to be like, you know, kind of to bring you to the to the member God and to say, look how amazing it is that, you know, the, the embryo, how it glows. It wasn't meant to be, you know, scientifically accurate. And when you look into it, you find it's actually the idea is flawed. And same thing with the stories in the Quran, you know, like if they were true stories, why is it that we're finding trouble, you know, verifying these facts? I'll make another video about Dulkanin in the future. It's a, it's a longer topic. But then some of the... I just don't believe that there's any possibility that this actually came from a divine being, this book, the Quran. And when you look into it, you find many things that, that don't add up. And this is why I had to eventually leave Islam. Despite all the investment I put into it, you know, emotional investment and, um, you know, my, my personality, my friends, you know, everything was Islam to me. So this was a huge loss, you know, losing God. And uh, some people want to know what I believe now. I personally don't believe there's any God, uh, so I'm atheist. But, you know, if someone would ask, well, where did everything come from? I would say I'm still, I'm still learning and I don't think we have all the answers. But it is possible there is a force, you know, outside of the universe. Um, I don't know if you wouldn't call it necessarily God. You could call it God, but, you know, a force, a power, a being that made everything. That made everything into what it is. But this, this being... From what I can tell, you know, either does not care about us or does not know about us, is not interested in us, you know, doesn't answer dua, doesn't, like, if you just look at the state of the world today, um, all the suffering and all the pain, it does not look like there's any God out there that cares for us, that's looking out for us. And in fact, that's what I believe, that if there is a creator, either he doesn't know about us or he doesn't care about us and he's just letting all these things happen. And which is why I'm, I'm, I'm an atheist, because because I don't believe that, the, that there is a God. But if there is a creator out there, I mean, maybe he has no personality. Maybe it's just like a force, a power, um, you know, 